Well, howdy, folks. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing really good. Well, we're just out in the shop here. I got a hot coffee going, cleaning up some tools, and uh, just kind of tinkering on this Telecaster a little bit more. This one belongs to a friend, and uh, I did quite a bit of stuff to this one. We changed the pit guard, changed the rear pickup, put a Wilkinson bridge plate with compensated brass saddles on it, filled in some holes where there was a Bigsby, and a few other little things. I've got the guitar strung up and plugged it in and played it. Sounds great. Uh, I must say the compensated brass saddles really change the sound of these guitars. They really ring and sustain a lot better. Uh, this is the second or third one I've swapped out for brass saddles versus the individual six uh, saddles. Excuse me. So everything works and plays good. It sounds great. But I had no tone control. So I know it's wired right. Uh, that's not the issue, so I think the cap is bad. Uh, that was the cap that was in the guitar. I thought it would be okay, but in hindsight, uh, the original owner had modified this guitar severely, and the wiring was really a mess in there, so I'm thinking that he probably soldered and unsoldered that cap a bunch of times, and you know he probably burned it out. So... Uh, we're going to change the cap in it. Now, I bought this assortment of caps on, on uh, eBay. Nothing really expensive, uh, but they work, and uh, that's all that matters. So, what you have here is different values. 33, .33 NF, which is nanofarad. Okay, .47. If it says PF, it's picofarad, NF, nanofarad. Just uh, something you want to kind of remember. Um, again, now, let's say you use a 47 uh, nanofarad and versus, let's say, a 33, okay? This 33 is going to be brighter than this. So the higher the value, the more treble gets cut off and the more bass is allowed through so to speak okay so you know in a telly you could use a 33 a 47 you could use a 22 it's all really a personal preference I like the uh, 47 I uh, have never really had any issues with it so I'm just kind of used to it and uh, that's what we're gonna put in here today so there's 20 of those in there which is uh, Quite a few, you know, I'm, I, I may not use all these in certain applications, but you can double them up too, you know, and take two 22s and put them together and, you know, it'll get you a 44 or a what have you. So you can kind of link these together and I just wanted to kind of go over that with you folks. So what we're going to do is pull the control plate off. We'll uh, take the old cap out and we'll put a new one right in. Okay, so... Get our soldering iron all hot, heated right up. Good. Okay, there's one leg. And this one. Being a little stubborn, but we'll get it. Okay. Okay, so there's the old one. We're going to take that one right out. And uh, we'll put a new one right in its place. Should be good to go. I just got to bend that leg a little bit. All right. I'm going to go through a little bit more. Yeah, probably something like that's good. Let that sit for a second. Cool down. Okay, so I'm gonna just bend the other leg right up around. And uh I know this is tricky to see on camera, but I'm doing my best. 
and just want to heat that solder up on top of the pot and get it flowed over the wire and that will do it so what I'm going to do now is just snip that leg off where it's long we should be good to go okay so we're just going to put the uh, screws back in the uh, control plate here pretty simple process to change a cap really now you can experiment with them too and try different values uh, there's nothing wrong with that and different pots will change things too you know depending on the taper of pot you're using you could actually you know if you want to roll the tone all the way back and then add some treble to it uh, some pots will will get it almost instantly some pots you have to turn quite a ways before it engages there's all kinds of options there and uh, that's really my whole point about this you don't have to just do what it says in the book okay you can make things up as you go another thing I would like to recommend is getting one of these little testers okay you can get these online eBay you know, they're like 10 bucks, and you can buy this little plastic case that protects it and whatnot. So all you really are going to do is this. You have these little, little uh, things here that you stick your pad in, take two legs of a capacitor or resistor, put it in any one of these, as long as you have one in, in, in one slot and one in the other, clamp it down, hit the button, and it will tell you what it is, whether it's a capacitor, resistor, and it will also tell you the value. So that's pretty nice and uh, really handy. So you can actually measure the value. Let's say you got some of those mixed up in there by accident. Well, you can test them just to make sure. Not a bad idea because they might have messed them up when they were putting them in there at the factory too. So it's a good idea to check everything. I like to do that myself, so I just wanted to add that, and uh, hopefully this info helps. Like I said, you know, you can you can experiment with these and uh, come up with some different stuff that that may you know suit your playing style better. And uh, you know, if you play a Telecaster or the same guitar all the time, you know, it's nice to have that just familiar. So when you pick it up, you know what it's going to do. You know how far you're going to turn the tone knob. Uh, if you're used to it, then run the same thing. If you don't like that, then you can try a different cap. You can try, try different pots as well, like I said. So I just wanted to share that with you folks, and uh, hopefully that info will help. Not a bad idea to buy a little kit like this if you own a bunch of guitars. That will probably last you a lifetime, honestly. And remember, if you ain't crocking, you ain't rocking. <laughs> okay, so the cap was bad. After I removed the cap, I tested it, and it was, it was no good. So I changed the cap, as you guys saw, and uh, tried it again. And I could get, I, I could tell that the cap was functioning correctly. But the uh, potentiometer was bad on the tone control as well. Now everything looked like new in there. And this guitar had not been played at all by the looks of it. But somebody had been in there and modded some stuff. Looks like they changed the controls. And, uh, you know, at first glance I had no reason to believe that it would be bad. It just looked like everything was new. I'm sure it got really hot. It probably had been soldered. A um, bunch of times in there, and uh, you know, in hindsight, I should have probably just changed it when I changed the cap. But uh, hopefully, we get everything going. Okay, so there's the bridge. Roll it off. So that's good. Let's go to the middle. Turn the tone all the way clock kind of clockwise. That's what we're looking for. Neck pickup. 
perfect. We're good to go. Uh, this one's pretty close, really. Uh, the intonation's not bad. It's pretty handy. I haven't really brought it home yet, but uh, it's really close, just like it is, so it won't take much. Um, the playability is really nice on this guitar. It's got a nice feeling neck on it. The fret ends feel good. Um, all in all, it's a pretty good guitar here now. We've changed all the bad pieces in it, so, you know, this one should be good to go for a while. Yeah, pretty cool. Like I said, you know, the setup's pretty handy. It might need a little bit more, but... Uh, you know, it's the action's pretty tight right there. It's low and plays nice. Um, you know, I haven't heard anything really buzzing, so I think this one's good to go. This one's been kind of an electrical nightmare for me. Uh, switches, pots, everything, you know, and it's tough sometimes if you just change one component, you know, that you think is bad and then it doesn't work again. Uh, sometimes it's better off just to completely got it, put new switches, new pots, and get it over with. If not, you could end up just, you know, taking two steps back and one forward. I was kind of doing that on this, so. And it's not like it was a matter of cost. It was just, you know, I thought this stuff was still good it looked just like new really honestly so you know that can happen i've got brand new potentiometers that were bad that can happen so one thing to keep in mind when you're soldering on these um whenever you're soldering onto a potentiometer make sure the volume is all the way off or all the way on 10 before you get them hot with a soldering iron so if they if they're not, you can burn the contact points, okay, and then the pot's no good. You'll have a bad spot in the middle of it. Sometimes it just wipes that, takes the wiper right out. So uh, keep that in mind. That can really be a a headache as well. So anyways, this one's back to life and uh, ready for action. So. You know, like I said, if you guys have been following along on the channel, I've been messing with this one quite a bit, really. But, you know, not all at once. I just do it here and there for a few minutes. And sometimes you need to step back from stuff when it's, you know, just mind-blowing mind and whatever. Mind-boggling, I should say. And you can't figure something out. Sometimes you have to just take a step back and uh, get away from it for a while. And uh, eventually, you know, you'll start thinking it through again without being hovered right over it on the bench. Because that can be distracting sometimes, uh, at least for me. So sometimes I need to just shut the lights off, get away, get away from the bench, and I'll figure it out on my own usually. But, you know, if I just stand there and keep trying stuff, sometimes that can be really... Uh, taken many steps backwards in my opinion at least in my case you, you get doing too many things at once and trying multiple things at the same time that's not a good way to troubleshoot one thing at a time that's how you really should you know approach that stuff <clears throat> it just seems to make it easier in the long run well okay folks thanks for sticking with me on this one <laughs> This will be a fun guitar for him to play, and I'm sure he's looking forward to playing it too. So, uh, you know, it was fun, fun little project. Like I said, I always learn a couple things doing this kind of stuff. Uh, and it doesn't matter how many times you do it or how long you've been doing it. Um, these things will teach you stuff every time you put them on the bench. Okay, folks. Well, thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys real soon. Be good. Okie doke.